Look at me. <laughs> That's enough of that. That's, That's enough. Good. Yeah. It sucks. Uh, all right. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wind Up Watch Fair in Chicago for the first time. My name is Blake Bettner. That's Zach from New York. Hey, Zach. Hey, also known as Zach Weiss and yes. Zach from New York. Yeah. Well, other Zach is from Concord. Zach is so, from Concord. Yeah, Zach kind of I don't know any of the Zachs. Is a, really? Nope. We have a lot of Zachs wow. on the team and, uh, and some Blakes around here as well. There's a lot of Zachs uh, in the watch well. world now. So. And on your team. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're thrilled to be joined by two uh, very good friends of ours. They've uh, both been on the podcast before. We've known each other for a very long time. Uh, Mr. Jason Heaton and uh, James Stacey of the Grainado. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Grey NATO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy to be here. No, this is uh, super fun. I'm, I'm blown away by the show so far. I'm, I'm speaking for Jason, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the turnout's incredible. I'm making a lot of uncomfortable eye contact. Uncomfortable for me, you guys are all very sweet. Uh, there's a reason I do a podcast <laughs> uh, through a screen. Uh, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's really buck wild. Like, uh, it had always been on my list to make it to the New York show. And for whatever reason, just never did. You know, being it, it's a bit of a distance. and. Uh, and to be able to come down and not only have a table, but to see everyone here, it's uh, like kind of jaw dropping. What you guys have built and, and what people are, are kind of like keen to come in and chat about. It's a great community. That. Yeah. It's entirely no question. For them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you everyone for coming and making it an excellent show. Yeah. Uh, so before we get into things, there's a few things that I thought we could uh, kick things off on. First, of course, a wrist check. I feel like you guys are wearing the it's, same watch. Yeah, it's singularly brand heavy on, the, on the couch today. <laughs> bit, yeah. uh, all right, let's start with Zach. Zach, what are you wearing? Sure, I'm wearing a Porsche Orfina featuring the Lamani 5100 movement that uh, is presumably from like the late 70s, early 80s, something like that. Yeah, absolute yeah. banger. Uh, love this watch. Of course, we saw the yeah. recent re-edition of the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw it in the Top Gun movie with that guy Tom Cruise. That guy and Tom Cruise. Uh, yeah. the watch holds up as well as it ever has, I think. So um, I'm wearing a Tudor Black Bay Pro on one wrist and a Citizen. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know the name uh, of this specific watch. Let's uh, give it a name. Let's give it a name. Uh, the Blue boy, Brutus. The Blue Brutus. That Blue sounds Brutus. like it works. I love it. It's very large. <laughs> it's flat, though, and it's radical, I think, is a good word to yeah. describe this yeah. watch. I, I absolutely love it. And I see, like, uh, I'm, I'm in good company here. What, what is this watch on, on your guys' wrist? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so this is the Citizen JP2007-17W, and it's, uh, unfortunately, it's a watch that is not yet available in the U.S. market. I've been hammering on Citizen to make this available here. Um, if we all together make this yes, about Yes, go over it. to the Citizen booth it's and a, say you want this watch. This is a kind of a, a, a modern, the most modern take on their first Aqualand from the 80s. Uh, it's got an electronic depth gauge, analog digital display, um, and this one's got the loom dial with a PVD case. So it's, I mean, it ticks so many boxes for me. And um, yeah, I was talking it up uh, so much to James that, uh, that he got keen on one, and that's what he's got on too. <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for a loom dial. If you listen to the show, you would know. Um, I, I, you know it ignites the five-year-old in me in, in a big way. And, uh, and the fact that this does the depth gauge, you took yours diving this morning, uh, it, it's, it's killer. And, and I do think that even if it's in a small run, we should convince, uh, convince Citizen to maybe consider bringing a few, a few to this side of the world. Yeah. Uh, I think it's super fun. Um, and, and the... The weird thing is that new for me is the kind of because I saw this only like a couple of days ago because Jason and I hadn't seen each other face to face for years uh, due to obvious reasons and um, the gun metal is like a weird if you can most of you can probably see it from here offset like normally you'd be steel in the loom but the gun metal kind of kills it yeah it's great so fun sixty click bezel yeah uh, easily does two time zones I got mine watching an eye on on the fan back home and that kind of thing so it's yeah. killer and this has a, a an aperture oh. sticking out. Uh, along the uh, nine o'clock side of the case. I understand, you can tell us what this is. And Play then, pause uh, button for Spotify. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you put this to good use this morning, I understand. I did, yeah, Jason. I, uh, christened it in Lake Michigan. Yeah. Uh, took it diving um, with the uh, chap at the back there, Ben Lowry, who you might know as Submersible Wrist on Instagram. Hey, hey. Ben Lowry, shout uh, out. Ben was f kind enough to whisk me back from Hammond, Indiana, where we were on a dive boat this morning. Uh, got me back sort of in time for wind up. Uh, yeah, we do have a couple of wrecks uh, in Lake Michigan and uh, was able to see how it works. It's great. So yeah, this is a, it's a depth sensor. Citizen was the first watch in the mid-80s to do uh, an electronic depth gauge combined with analog digital uh, display. And they've been doing it ever since. And uh, it's always been one of my favorite uh, of the great kind of historical dive watches. And it, and it worked great today. Yeah, yeah very cool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, if you haven't visited their booth over there, they've got a lot of really cool stuff. <laughs> well, I don't want to gloss over this one just because Jason and I are wearing the same thing. This one, which we are going to call the Blue Brutus, but probably in the show <laughs> notes, we'll put the correct thing in. 
<laughs> That's yes, a watch yes. that I've only seen on their website, and I honestly thought it would be about two times that size. Yeah, it's it's surprisingly That's a super thin. weird wearable case, and for it's a titanium uh, mid case, so it's very wearable, and it's got the same kind of it's it's dark, but it's not like black. Blue so rubber's kind of cool too. Yeah, it's got a lot going for it. Yeah. Uh, and they've got their Mako uh, What's divers the price point? over there. Five hundred bucks, four ninety nine, something like and this? that. This, yeah. that one, I believe it goes for between five and six hundred. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Can't go wrong. All very right. cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have nothing else to add. Very cool. Obviously, these are, these are some of the ones we like. I think where we wanted to kind of kick off uh, the chat was, uh, what, what have you guys liked? You know, we're, we're like, let's call it halfway through uh, 2022, uh, as, close as, as close as we need to be. Uh, yeah. What have you guys liked that has kind of come out this year, like that has kind of stayed on your radar? Because there's been a lot of releases. It's been a busy year. So I think probably the big one recently that's been on both of our wrists a lot lately is the one of the watches on my wrist, the Tudor Black Bay Pro. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think this is a watch that uh, that we all saw and went hands on with in Geneva when it was released. Uh, you know, you get you get a brief window with these watches. It's hard to kind of form a full opinion on these things, and uh, we went into it without any of the, you know, we didn't read anything about it online or anything. You just go in and cold. You, you, get, you make your first impression without reading anything else on the internet about it. So of course we saw it and then you start to see everything that's being written about it and said about it and you're like, oh, did I, did I like that? Maybe I was wrong about it. Uh, <laughs> but I think we both initially had really positive reactions to this watch yeah. right off the bat and we're kind of surprised uh, by yeah, some of the, by the, yeah, the negative, negative elements. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we've both been wearing one quite a bit and, uh, and like it a lot, actually. Uh, I think it's got a great footprint mm -hmm. and I don't think there's any shame in saying it's a little bit thicker. Yeah. It's got some heft on it. It still wears really well though. And, and I think this is something we've all been talking about a lot lately the numbers how we all kind of make these arbitrary rules about measurements this and that if it's wearable it's wearable and yep. uh, if you like it you know it's also like a super personal thing yeah I, I will I will throw out a funny story that just makes me look like an idiot but that's okay uh, the when the press release drops so like uh, for those of you who you know haven't had the pleasure of covering like a, a Basel world or a, a Geneva watch days or watch of wonders uh, you're sip you're typically sitting in a room maybe it's a co-workers hotel room maybe it's a, a you know, a, a group space or something, and you're waiting for 8 or 8.30 a.m. local for Tudor and Rolex and others to drop all their press releases. It all comes at once. You don't get one minute warning. It doesn't matter if you're on the press or not, which I, I kind of dig. And uh, this dropped, and of course, I was very excited. It's a GMT. It's like Deep in my wheelhouse. It's, it's from the bloodline of the Explorer 2, also Deep in my wheelhouse. And then uh, I'm flicking through the, the thing, and I get really excited because I see the thickness is like 7.9 millimeters. And I'm sitting with the rest of the Hodinkee team, and I was like, oh, guys, it's 7.9 million. This is going to be crazy. This is like the best. And they're like, the movement or the case? And I was yeah. like, oh, the movement. <laughs> Obviously, you knew you were talking about the quickly. movement. Like, no, yeah. I was just too excited. I mean, the, 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 the nice thing is, like, after a, a decade of doing this, like, I, I still get really pumped by a, a press release, <laughs> even if I misread it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was blown away by that watch. I think if I didn't own uh, the 16570, I, I would have asked to buy one as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't sell it. Watches and Wonders or whatever. I, I, I don't think it's too thick. I, I think for a sport watch, it makes sense. There's a lot of water resistance there. Yeah. It also like has a, a certain amount of heft yeah. that's balanced nicely by the new bracelet. Um, but I, you guys have had way more time hands on. What, what leads you to kind of pick it up tomorrow or, or yesterday or whatever? Feels really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those watches that like feels right on the wrist and it has it's funny, the heft is like maybe the only thing that at, at times I feel like You do yours heavy. on a bracelet as well? I do mine on the bracelet, and I'm not actually really much of a bracelet person, but I really wanted that bracelet. I've always admired the tapered rivet bracelet on the Black Bay 58. It um, just feels like the right thing to go with those watches. And with the T-Fit clasp, uh, that, which it gives you like a full link of adjustment. It really kind of like felt like that extra thing that would go towards making it comfortable during the day, because I just find them fatiguing bracelets. This one actually, these kind of jangly vintage bracelets that you bracelets can get around that, but um, but yeah, so that was a that was a big sell selling point for me. But it is heavy, and I would say like the thickness, less of an issue for me sometimes in the day in terms of feeling it than the weight. If it was titanium, that'd be the one thing that I think would make it like the the perfect version of that. That would push it over but, the edge. Yeah. But I right now like and it's still granted like honeymooning phase so to speak. Like I want to go to it before other watches right now. Like I had to yeah. force myself to change up to this other <laughs> very nice watch I had this morning. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think for me, there's a lot of fun details to it. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people make the comparison to the 1655, um, the first Explorer too. Uh, 
I don't know if I see that every time I look at it. I mean, yep. the steel bezel, okay. And, uh, Absolutely. Uh, but the, I think the colors are a lot more uh, subdued. It's somewhere between kind of a yellow and an orange. It's, it's nothing that's too in your face. I like the design of the 24 hour hand. Um, I think, the, and, and the hour indices are like these blocks, yep. loom, ceramic. I don't know what they are. Yeah, They're very cool ceramic, though. And they've got a lot ceramic, of structure. Yeah. You walk in from outside and it's like, it hits you in the face. And you notice the structure on the dial. So I think there's a lot of fun details about this watch to enjoy. And it's just, Simple, handsome watch. Yeah. So it works. For sure. Yeah. And, and it's a watch we'd all been asking for, right? I, I think so, you, yeah. You, I mean, all of us, like, hey, they need, we need this 39mm uh, uh, GMT from Tudor, and they delivered. Yeah, and, and you know, it, uh, again, I, I, can, I can eat some crow because I, I had posited for years saying that I didn't know that that movement would fit in a 39mm case yeah. instead of the mm -hmm. It's the same one that's the in, the, GMT. in yeah. the GMT. So I, th I think that's cool. That means obviously any of you who know Tudor's lineup can connect lines to other watches. That, that means that movement would fit into, which would be super rad. Uh, I, I'm gonna, you know, yet again, put it out into the ether that that movement would be super cool in a Pelagos. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna see that, but I'm gonna keep saying it. Um, they left titanium off the table right now, right? It's true, so yeah. It's, it's, who it's available for some Right, <laughs> and obviously then now we've, we've kind of seen that bloodline. I, can't, I don't know if you could say like extend, or derivate back to the new Ranger, which is kind of an, a continuation of a watch from 2014 that went That's away right. a couple years ago. Yeah. But I don't think that you can talk about this in a vacuum anymore yeah. because we have another steel 39 millimeter uh, Tudor that, that offers the sort of field watch vibe rather than a Black Bay 58 or a That's 41. Right. And you got to spend some good hands on time with this watch. Yep. Uh, I know you did as well at, yep. at the launch. Uh, what were your impressions of this? I dig it. I mean, for me, it, I, I would still like, and I think I said this on Instagram, like I, I think I'd still lean towards something that feels more like a dive watch. I yeah. don't know that I'm, I've ever been a field watch guy, especially if we're talking three grand. Yeah. But also if you, if you consider it in like a vacuum, a couple of days before that watch came out, if you said, hey, Tudor's gonna make a, a 39 millimeter steel sports watch with the new movement um, and a T-fit bracelet with no rivets and good loom and good water resistance, and yeah. it's gonna be three grand. I think people would have kind of lost their mind, like credit cards would have come out before it came out. Yeah. And then when it wasn't quite exactly what people wanted, I think, it, you know, Tudor, Tudor is now big enough to enjoy derision among those who love them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not just Tudor haters, but it's like internalized where it's, it's people who love Tudor but didn't get the exact watch they want. Yeah. Which, look, as the guy who's been asking for a, a Pelagos GMT for a long time, I get it. I see yeah. where you're coming from. But I think the Rangers are really successful if, and I've said this many times, very conventional watch. Yeah, and, and I, I, I happen to think that Tudor is at their best when they leave the kind of conventional yep. uh, greatness. Like the FXD, I'm, I love this watch. Yep. It's it's a little strange, and uh, the bracelet on the new uh, Ranger looks looks fantastic. I yep. feel like they've got a lot of pieces floating around out For there sure. that people would like to see. You know, I mean, a titanium version of this. Um, uh, you know, I think would work really well, yeah. of course. And in the Pelagos family, maybe even? Yeah, maybe. You know, we might be onto something here. Who knows? I mean, it's hard <laughs> to say, but you've had an Oyster Prince in the past, right? A, a pseudo-modern Oyster Prince. I did, yeah. What do you was, see as uh, this? Is, do you see like a direct connection or is there going to 39 a problem? No, I think 39 is great. I've got a 14270 Explorer and um, I like it. I like the, the 36 millimeter size. I think the, uh, I think the 39 Ranger, I, I had a 41 millimeter Ranger for a while, and it just didn't quite do it for me. It was too much dial. A lot of dial, yeah. slim bezel. And I, I'm, I'm smitten with the new Ranger, um, although in terms of my personal ownership, I like something with a widget, you know, bezel or chronograph <laughs> yeah, or something. Sucker, yeah. um, but, but I don't know, I, I, I've seen pictures of that Ranger. I haven't handled it like you guys, but I, I just think I would really, really fall in love with that watch if I had it on because um, I, I've always liked the look of the 1016 and the old Rangers better than when they moved to the new explorers with kind of the applied numerals, I felt like it kind of got away from mm -hmm. the elements yeah. of that genre of watch that I liked so much. There's I, something still very nice and like gestural about the, yeah. the particularly the nine and the six. Yes. Like I, I'm yeah. still writing a little bit about it, but I kind of liken it to like a Saul Bass poster. And I really like that aspect, which I feel like, yeah, the modern explorer style post 1016 sort of yeah. went to a CAD plotted feeling right. sort of a thing, you know? Right, right. Um, it's starting to feel a little bit dated kind of human, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't disagree, feeling, you know? yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I wanted, you brought up Basel, uh, as we're talking about kind of new releases this year. Uh, do you miss that? Do we miss the Basel <laughs> work? Do we miss the kind of like Super Bowl event of like you know what? all these drops at once? Now that, now that, I mean, I used to go to Basel for years. I didn't go last year, but I, being here, 
kind of lit the fire in me yeah. again. This like, is the best part of what for we this got sort of experience. Now this is very different from Basel. I think it's much more on a very personal, interactive level, a little more casual, friendlier. Um, but just that general sense of like being among your tribe of people that yeah. sure really just unabashedly nerds out about watches and is happy to talk to other people about the same stuff. That's what I miss. I don't. I don't miss so much the you know. Hauling gear around in a sport coat, sweating <laughs> yeah. it out, like in booze yeah. and over drinking too much espresso, but you know, the the just the interactions right, are what I, I miss of that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. just seeing a lot of watches and like just being fully open, like, you know, you almost feel like you can you can finally express yourself in the way that you really you really want to among your people. You know? Yeah. There, there's something there's a charm about Basel that I that I miss that is a little bit lost the in the town you mean? Yeah. The town and just the event itself, yeah. you know, running from building to building and, sure. and yeah. the, the kind of weird hallways. And I miss wandering around in some of the old buildings that had maybe some of the lesser known brands and oh, just sure. discovering things. Hall 2, Hall like 3. In, at Watches and Wonders, you know every single one of these brands, you know what they're doing and all that kind of stuff. There's no place to just find something new. Did and you, I will yeah. miss that part. Did that's you get over that's what this feels watches? like to me though. I mean, not to, I not to overplug yeah. wind up, but this, this feels it. like Hall two or the yeah, yeah, palace exactly. or Basel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely like the palace, yeah. but even more approachable. Yeah, definitely. Oh, there's I not so. there's not champagne behind the, like, can I walk up and just take a glass? They're pouring. Yeah, right, right, right. If I move quickly, will I get away with oh, it or do I go to jail in Switzerland? <laughs> yeah, right, right. right? Yeah, yeah. I'd like some champagne, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Why not? <laughs> like, Where are the bathrooms? Yeah. 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 That's always a thing. Yeah, I mean the, the it, it it's fascinating because for me, I don't really care what the show is called. I just I want it to be about people who actually buy watches. Mm -hmm. Not like brands have to do what they have to do to sell a watch. I'm less concerned with the, that than I am the the side where it hits the people who buy it. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. Like, I spent years trying to figure out the whole both sides of it. And now I just don't really care. Like a brand can do whatever they want. If it's successful, cool. That's what it's required. Agreed. But like you still have to translate whatever it is you decided to do this year versus last year versus in the watch industry 30, 40, 50 years ago to sell something to someone. And the Rangers an interesting study in that as is. Um, as, as are a lot of the watches that came out this year. I mean, uh, Jason, we, we've talked about a handful of watches that you haven't had a, a chance to see in person. What would be on your list for 2022 that kind of stands out? Yeah. Well, I mean, aside from literally what's on your <laughs> wrist. Yeah, no. One that, uh, that I did get to handle recently, thanks to you, and I hope Canadian Customs isn't listening to this because James <laughs> recently... It's okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, go nuts. <laughs> James, bought, <laughs> James bought one of these new Seiko 5 uh, yeah, GMTs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll have to pay customs when I go back, for sure. That's fine. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, all right. We'll keep it above board. Um, but, he, but he had it shipped to me because he knew I was driving here to give it to him. Uh, oh, yeah. He's probably got it right here. I don't, pass I don't, it around. I don't remember the reference number, but, you know, uh, it's the one. This is the SSK003. So this is the one with the, 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 the blue sunburst style and the blue and the black bezel, the, the Seiko 5 GMT. Oh. Hand it to Justin. You guys yeah. pass it around. Please, nobody right. steal it. Yeah. <laughs> I know most of you. You'll be, it'll be okay. If you, want, if you want that strap, just talk to us. Um, you can steal the strap. <laughs> no. Um, boxes. But no, that watch struck me, because I've been a long time SKX and kind of SKX adjacent yeah. Seiko fan, and um, I think everybody agrees, right? I mean, Seiko really knocked it out of the park with this one. I think uh, other than what that guy just noticed, it's, uh, it's not a ratcheting... Uh, 12 position. Which is just, it's not that it's position. bad, it's just so it's weird. It's like weird if you do a friction SKX, bezel. It's like, yeah. it's like you want some clicks, on, even on a, on it a It works on a okay. I, I'm going to go, I'm okay with it with the friction because um, you get drilled lugs and solid end links. Yeah. The bracelet it comes with is a step up. What's that? Grand Seiko does it. They did it with the SVG case. Oh, sure. LEDs All tension? Yeah. 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 And what the beauty is, my, my wife is from Sri Lanka, we visit there. Sri Lanka is on a half hour offset. You can do that on this watch. There so you, you, you can oh, nice. you can accommodate that. And for I those asking, an it's a it's a collar, and basically it's on the first position. So one direction does your date, the other direction advances the red hour hand. It's kind of a trick thing because the hat the hand is so big, it almost doesn't make any difference which one is local and which one's home. <laughs> so you could almost still use this pretty easily for travel as long as you weren't picky. Yeah. And also for four hundred seventy five bucks, I would say don't be picky. Just enjoy the watch. It's killer. Yeah. yeah. I, I bought it. That, that I bought that with my own money, like I do a lot of the Seikos, and I'm really impressed with it. And it also feels like something that myself and others have been asking for for a decade. Like, hundred yeah. percent. Let's do it. Yeah, everyone's been waiting for the like the affordable GMT from yeah. them, and they came out with the true GMTs and the six R line, the Prasad yeah, the sharp, line. the sharp. Didn't quite have as much of an impact as I kind of expect them I think to. People just want that. The, yeah. They've sold. They've sold this idea, and and people like me haven't helped them. Um, with the uh, you know the the five KX the mm. SPB s series the, the the expanse of the Prospect, Prospect line, even the the Turtles uh, which kind of kicked it off is like a lot of people I think want 
they want modern Seiko, but they want it in a in a '60s package. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Which I mean, look, that's what Tudor's yeah. doing as well, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's not yeah. it's not a different rule book, um, but it, it's a it's a fun watch, and I, uh, I'm just happy to be. I, you know, Jason, and I say this a lot. We're thrilled when we get to talk about anything under a grand, like happily, like stuff we put the card comes out immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's one of them. So I, I suggest if you're if you're in the market and 42.5 isn't like way too big, I mean, make it a summer watch if it is. But uh, I think it's killer. I feel oh, like those uh, those land turtles they came out with the other year, which were, you know, those are four R movements in mm -hmm. there, and I think it's more or less like a drop in movement. Like that's sort of another perfect format. Like I'm waiting to see it kind of creep into the some GMT and other stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. I would love them to like, take the same because I think it's a treatment of the day wheel. Mm -hmm. Put it in the six. Give me an SPB one four three with another hand. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. That's right. yeah, you already got me for five hundred bucks. Bring yeah. it in for yeah. fifteen. I think like, we'd all let's be. Make Which it is like <laughs> that land turtle. I'm not happy about it, but I'm also not angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, when, what do you guys think of the splintering of the? This is Seiko Five. You mentioned the SKX. Yeah. So it's kind of in that style, but yeah. they've renamed these, yep. and now they've got the SPBs and the Prospect that have kind of moved up line a little bit. I mean, I feel like the Seiko Fives. It's a, it's a it's a made in Japan watch. It looks and feels just like uh, an SKX. Mm -hmm. It's only 100 meters water resistant, which everybody sort of quibbles about. But I mean, I, I've dived with 100 meter watches without screw down crowns many yeah. times. It, they, they do just fine. I would have no problem. We're going to take that one diving as well. Yeah, I would have no problem taking that one diving. Um, so I, I wouldn't have a problem taking that watch anywhere. I, I'm thrilled to see that line continue because I think it's such an icon in in the yeah. watch world. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, and speaking of another watch that we're all fond of, and I think maybe we all own the SPB. <laughs> yeah. Well, you one for three, I think you have. One for three. I don't have. I don't have. You don't have? No, I don't. Chase? I've talked to him about it too much. <laughs> He's got fatigue. He's got I'm SPB waiting. fatigue. He's no, got actually, SPB the one that, the one that I've been taken yes. with, I, I think they finally made, was the one that was based on the... The 6105, it just came out. The oh, the 313, 313, 317. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the more tonal shape case. Kind of yeah, yeah, follow yeah. Uh, Cole Pennington. He's got one on, on kits coming in. Yeah. yeah. By the time this episode comes out, it'll be on his Instagram, I bet. Yeah. I really want a 313, yeah. uh, the white dial. Yeah, yeah. And the 317 is the black. It's basically like the a Turtle Plus. Yeah. yeah. It's super uh, and it's sharp. a little smaller. Little the circular thinner. data aperture at uh, what is it four? four, four, four yeah. Something like four four thirty. Not right. great. Do but we have a problem with the four thirty day it. windows? Yeah, I okay. often yeah. do, but I'll I'll, I'll, I'll make exceptions. <laughs> okay, I'll make exceptions <laughs> for value. Yeah, these watches of course release at the same time as uh, as this. They had kind of a, a slew of releases. Uh, yeah, they did well. Uh, come on, uh, for sure. They're in there. I think we're all all pretty big hits. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll have a lot more to say about. I think we both will. <laughs> yeah, about these in, watches in the, in the coming yeah, weeks. this one, this one, will, we'll do, we'll do some stuff. I don't really know what yet. It depends on what I can pitch and get uh, get approved. But it'll be fun, and it'll I'll be on the show and the rest of it. The other one that I've seen two of at the show uh, this weekend, and I bet there's one in the room, maybe even both of them, is the uh, the army, the Docs Army, the which Docs came out this army. year. Yes, mm -hmm. Docs Army put them in the air. There we are. Is there's the one. one. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it's uh, oh, he's got it on his wrist right there. So that Beautiful. you know. Uh, obviously a, a throwback to a 70s Doxa with this incredible military history and then they remade it extra special uh, in a limited edition with ceramic and this really cool kind of paintbrush NATO, yeah. uh, uh, like camouflage NATO. Uh, I was in New York for the launch of it and, and, and I just think they did a lovely job. It was, a, it's a, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on record, a lot of you know. And, and we saw one of them, the white pearl carbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need one of those. I should have mentioned that. It's one. a good thing that you guys don't have Doxa here. Look, oof. it would have cost me a lot. That yeah. I would have gotten arrested at the border <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you know what I like about this watch? The case, and they didn't really talk yeah, about it. It's yeah. thinner. It's thinner. Uh, it's thin. Thin. It's super Not that matte. I put everything in the numbers and all this kind of yeah. stuff, but it like it made yeah. a notable difference. It looks and, incredible. And yeah. I would like to see it enter the regular production realm of the Sub 300. Uh, yep. Of course, it's a beautiful case that they did with this. Um, and I think they did a great job with this, and that kind of contrasts. I think I've seen a synchron or two walking around here, uh, which is also a pretty sweet thing as well. Which, yeah. which, which is great. Yeah. And you had one for, yeah, had one for a little while, yeah, yeah for a minute. What yeah, were your thoughts watch. on the army? I, I mean, I, I like the synchron for so the style. Like I like the, the army yeah. for the look of it. Yeah, great story. I mean, it's it's a, it's a rad watch. Went fast for a reason. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, no, they, they're 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 onto some good things uh, these days, and it seems like they're kind of ramping up. Their their collections, a lot more colors uh, on the dials, right? They yeah. use the Sea Rambler and the yeah, they're expanding their yeah. stuff for yeah. sure. White pearl, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great to see. Yeah. Anything else from this year? I, I was going to mention uh, a brand that has been at Wind Up, but they aren't here. Is and if you get ever ever get a chance to see them, it's worth checking out. Our uh, is Vertex. They've oh, got the new yeah. Aqualion M60 diver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really great watch. You and I have both handled them. Yep. Um, I've got the steel one. You tried out the black the one. M60C. 
Um, incredible, I mean, they're up there in price, they're approaching 3,000, I think. Yeah. Um, but the, the packaging, the bracelet's good, the, the straps, the whole kit, and the watch itself, the bezel is, it's one of the best, the yep. grippiest bezels. If you like Fully doxa lit. bezels and marathon bezels and that kind of genre of good grippy bezels, it's great, it's unique. The loom is the best yep. ever, I yep. think, probably of any dive watch I've handled, actually. Wow, yeah. okay. Which is, yeah, yeah the, markers, the markers incredible. and the numerals are loom, so they're three or, uh, milled, so yeah. they're three-dimensional pieces of loom. Yeah. And they so just when they glow, room. they glow, but they're so translucent, you can see where they mount the dial. Like yeah. it's just luminous material. Yeah. Um, and I liken it to buying a car where you're buying the car for all the other reasons except the motor. Like, <laughs> like you buy a sports car that has a Chev motor or a Ford motor, right? Um, or, or, or maybe a Mercedes motor in, in a more modern context. Uh, whereas this, you're getting a COSC um, yeah. uh, Swiss movement, but it's not one made by Vertex. I mean, they're a tiny company, right. but all the other details were made by people who like watches as much as you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're not cheap, but they are. They, it feels like early days with Bremont. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah, you're, you're seeing like fantastic build quality. The packaging's remarkable. It comes with multiple straps and tools and spring yeah. bars. Everything's quick they're change. They're overachieving, over delivering. Yep, yeah, I think so. Good stuff. Yeah. I'm really impressed by what they put out. That, that's a, uh, a good yeah. one for sure. Yeah, yeah Vertex was at uh, San Francisco. Yeah, they were in San Francisco. I don't know yeah. if they'll be in New York or not. Uh, I'm not unsure, but uh, keep but an eye on windupwatch.com. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a good example. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is a great example of a watch that you see in a picture and you might kind of gloss over it or something. Mm -hmm. well, but so you see a picture and you're like, three grand? Come on. It, well, exactly that. <laughs> it, like, they do make an impression in the, in the flesh yes, when you see them. They do. It's yeah, a, it's a, that's a watch that's worth handling. They stand Not out. Not just their dive watch, but their other watches as well. Yeah. 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 Interesting stuff happening there. What about that? Uh, what about that weirdo Oris full steel, thirty six point five millimeter push button GMT? <sighs> I didn't want to bring that up, no. uh, James. <laughs> I love no, it. No, I was going to get talked to you about that. This is a. You, you're not a fan, not as much a fan. It's a device. Uh, yeah. Look, I normally I like kind of out there weird things. Uh, which well, this 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 one might have gone even a little step over I mean, that. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Fl and, 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 and I'll tell you why. It's, it's not, what is it? Thirty six. Thirty six um, or thirty six five. One of the millimeters. Other. And so the the end link on the bracelet. It's kind of like uh, yeah, it's this, mounds it's this up on the in, wrist yeah. there. So I don't know. I haven't gone hands on with one, so I can't. Oh, speak I had too it for a while. I but this it. is an unusual watch, though. It's got yeah. uh, the, the execution of this complication is quite unusual. Yeah, so it's something that dates back to the, I think, like 95, 96 for Oris. And it's a modified uh, Eta movement that has uh, buttons in the case. And you have your normal time, is, I mean, the dial is tiny because uh, it's a small watch, but you have your normal time and then you have another sub-dial, which you've seen on, on the ProPilot World Timer. And uh, what was the, they had the ProPilot where you rotated the bezel one oh, way and yeah. it adjusted. I not what that was called, yeah. Vijay's yeah. not gonna be happy with me. Oh, He's know. right outside. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Vijay. I, I can't remember the exact version of that one, but that, that was from a few years ago. And then this is just a recreation of a kind of a weird watch that they made for a few years called the 690 World Timer. And uh, you can basically adjust you, you have a little sub-dial that gives you uh, not only AM, PM indication, but a 12-hour indication of a home time, and then you push a button to jump either way, and it brings the date with it. Yeah. And it's this navy blue dial with red accents, and I, I've been a fan of the original for some time, and then they, they came out with a, they do these now, these annual Holstein editions, so this yeah. is the Holstein edition 2022. And it, it just sits in my mind as like, there's so many people, so many brands following loosely the same play in the book. Yeah to varying degrees of success. The Seikos, the, the, the Rolexes, the, the Tudors, of course, mm -hmm. the Doxas, and then, and then you get to the, this Oris and they're kind of like, we're already doing all of the other stuff, so let's yeah. also do <laughs> 250 of these and see, and see where it sticks. And I, I think it was super fun. Yeah. Um, because it's small but has wide lugs and, and a kind of a chunky steel bracelet, it wears a bit like a bracelet. What's less the than lug span on it? Is it 18? Uh, yes, I had one 18 right? millimeter. I have a photo of the, uh, I think it's on my Instagram, of, uh, on like a lizard strap. Of course, because why not? Because uh, why not? He's got I, lean I only have so many right? straps that aren't 20 millimeters. <laughs> hey, it made it back. It Kudos, made it back. Thank you for your honesty. Well, I'll, send them, I'll send the next watch uh, uh, shortly. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, I can send this one around if you guys want to see it. Why not? Oh, yeah, good idea. Show and tell, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Press all the buttons or whatever. The chronograph is just so I know how long we've been talking about one thing, but now I don't know, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Press all the buttons. <laughs> Go nuts. Um, oh, and we can send this around if you want to see the loom dial. You like the button presses. I know. Click once and then it's like a half press to jump the. Yeah, there you go. 
You like these world timers with buttons to, to I, I know they're 51, I mean, 64. Like, Jason and I love a watch that's essentially like a fidget spinner, right? Yeah. Yeah. It took yeah. us years to realize that's how childish yeah. we I'm are. not a big field watch guy. I like. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I like them in a vacuum. I yeah. like, I like yeah. the idea. I like photos of field watches, yeah, yeah, but for yeah, sure. not on the wrist. Yeah, I, yeah I, no, I, I feel you there, and I'm sure pl plenty of you can identify. Uh, when, I, when I reviewed the 36 millimeter Explorer, I started out by kind of admitting I, I want a sport watch with a bezel. Yeah. And the, yeah. my one hang up on the Explorer has always been that it doesn't have, not just that, uh, that it doesn't have a bezel yeah. uh, on it. My other big hang up was the, the 20 millimeter lug span. And I still maintain that on um, the 36 millimeter case, the 19 millimeter lug span is the correct move there. You're crazy. It's a ratio that needs to, look, it's it just math. 18. It's just math, okay? It's just the right. <laughs> it's objectively. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, don't I still have like any 19 millimeter NATOs. Don't do that to a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but speaking of, like, I, I think this is a trend that I've been seeing a lot of where, uh, well, I guess a few things, like the numbers are kind of like taking a backseat to the wearability of the watch and kind of the theme of the watch. And, and I hope that people are starting to pay attention to that. Yeah. I know that people like us have a long time kind of, we, we emphasize some of these numbers a little too much maybe. And I think a lot of people kind of start to create rules around these numbers and like, oh, I can't wear a watch that's under this or over that or, or whatever it is. Uh, you know, where I think a lot of brands take the approach of, or should be taking the approach of kind of, well, how wearable is this? And in like ergonomically, what am I doing to this watch? Instead of, well, I just have to keep it in these like, right. measurements. Right. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, so. I agree. There was a guy that uh, came to our booth just today. I think he's back in the audience here. who has got a one of these big Mido uh, GMTs. You yeah, can hold it up. There it yeah, is. right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the diameter of that? 44. 44. So it's 44 it millimeters. It looks incredible on and his wrist. It looks so good. Yeah. And on that orange break, that, that strap's not from that watch, right? It's from a slightly different watch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks so good. Yeah, so you know, I think you know a lot of people say, "Oh, that watch is too small." For so many years, you'd see comments on on the blogs that would be like, oh, "You know, I can't do 36. I can't do 38. It's too small. It's too small. It's too small." <clears throat> then it became, "These watches are too big. Too big. Too big." But it's like, I've always been a, a fan of big watches anyway, yeah. and I think like. They're so much fun, especially with a dive watch. Like, lean into it. Like, just yeah. embrace it. Enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, embrace it. I mean, they're. they're they're meant to be that way, you know? And, and, I, and one of your favorite watches, the Aquastar. Yeah, the deep true. Star. The it's deep it's star. the same thing. You yeah, know, I think you look at that on paper, or I mean, it just flat out is. It's a larger watch. Yeah. Okay? It's not yeah. going to work, and it's, it's not going to be comfortable on, on all wrists. Right. Right. But right. it's right. still got an undeniable charm. And speaking of new releases, like they've had a, uh, they just had a, a smaller version of that. 39. 39. Okay, yeah. The 39 millimeter. Yeah. It was quite sharp. Yeah. Okay. yeah. They've been doing a great job. I, I, for me, the I have uh, uh, Jason gifted me a 41. Uh, that I adore and wear, and it is, it wears so much like a, a Black Bay 41, like a, 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 a the dive watch. Yeah. Um, it, it has that kind of chunkiness to it and it makes it this incredible summer watch. And then they made the 36 millimeter, which doesn't have a chronograph. I'm not a huge chronograph guy, so I don't know that I would miss it. And that watch is like beautiful and really easy to wear. Mm -hmm. My only concern with brands not adhering to the number thing is like, so many people are buying watches sight unseen. Yeah. Myself, yeah. I'm sure lots of you in the audience. Like, so you're taking a risk. And unless we can figure out some way, and I'll say that I've tried and I've not come up, I have useless spreadsheets in Google of trying to figure out like a ratio between yeah. case width, <laughs> dial width, bezel width, case thickness, um, not lug to lug, but spring bar to spring bar is kind of, oh, okay. there's a bit of nerdiness between the two. I, I know, I know. I, I would say uh, the I'm only trying to be helpful. Is the goal. My goal is that you'd be able to like measure a watch you had at home. Like when I buy clothes, I, I want to know that I could measure a pair of pants I have at home yeah, and yeah. know what comes in the mail will be yeah. whatever it is. And I yeah. want the exact same for watches. I don't think that's asking too much. They're designed by computers. CAD t should be able to tell you within a tenth of a millimeter what all these are. So you shouldn't have any surprises if you buy a watch online. Yeah. And sure, with the Tudor, with um, maybe even with the Doxa, if you can get to New York, you could see it in person or something similar in person to decide if it's for you. But like, there's brands here that like, unless you come to a wind up, you have to take a, a shot, yeah. right? You yeah. know the width and you can go like, well, it's this or that. But like, there's four or five different proportions that play into it. And, yeah. and I'd love it to be something that's like, more transparent to the end buyer because you yeah. just buy something that you don't have to worry about returning or selling later or whatever, right? Who was somebody was asking us uh, too many variables. the weight yeah. 
oh. weight of the man. watch yeah. Yeah. that we I'm, could start including. Uh, I'm the so weirdo. Well, we're gonna yeah. scale. Yeah, you, you Would this scale. mean anything? I'm the weirdo that brings like a kitchen scale weight? to every watch. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I think you you need to start building up that to like have a reference point yeah. of well, what's heavy, what's light. 104 grams. What does that mean? Yeah. SKX 007 on a bracelet size for a seven inch wrist is 172 grams. That's a good reference point, and that's a good like kind of baseline. Just know these things. Yeah. You're like low, low 160s, not sized on a Ranger. So yeah. there, there you go. Yeah. I think weight is actually a more important number than even if, if you like a bracelet, especially. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because yeah. I, I think I, I personally, I don't. I, I never even notice the thickness of a watch. I mean, I, I don't uh, care about thickness. I, I my I guess it's probably based on what I wear. I don't yeah. wear a lot mm -hmm. of button buttoning cuffs or anything like that. So I wear short sleeves or I wear sweatshirts or sweaters. So it doesn't matter as much. So I don't care as much about thickness. But weight is very important to me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, just kind of the heft of a watch. Yeah, so. that's a big factor. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can, I have a Linda Verlin that, I, that comes to mind. It's 44 millimeters, but it's integrated. It's a titanium oh, cage, yeah. so it wears like really light. And it's yeah. kind of unusual. Yeah. And, you're super cool. Right. Does anybody still remember that brand? Linda Verlin? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they've it's had a couple the, of releases this year. The three timer or the. Uh, it's a Spido Light. Oh, yeah. so, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. This has got some lug to lug on it, but it's still fun. It weighs yeah. nothing. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I and like cool. watches that kind of push me out of my comfort zone a little bit. For sure. Uh, just, I think we all need. Who's a watch got the Aqualand? Like Any Aqualand owners there? No. Who's got my Aqualand? I just want to know oh, what the got, oh. what's, what's the chronograph at? Where are we at on their time? <laughs> time. On the chronograph. On the chronograph on the digital display. Oh, 17.03. Fantastic, I appreciate it. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay, we, we got some time, we got some time. Uh, well, I'm without either way, but it's, it, that's the only time that matters. But I think these are good, like, and even if I, I don't think that people should be taking these, like creating arbitrary rules around them, I, I think the one good thing is that people are paying attention to it and watch brands are too. Absolutely. And I think they're being forced to now include a lot more measurements of Man. their watches yeah. on product pages, the fact uh, that to people like us. thickness now, I'm, it, that's I'm a gonna, step in the right give me direction. a year, I'll get them into lug to lug. You get, I'll have them all <laughs> yeah. going for sure. And you get like this golden ratio. It's like you, look, you, just, you go on yeah. a car website and don't get me wrong, you spend way more, well, maybe you don't. <laughs> Cars are more complicated, but they don't necessarily cost more money. Um, you go on a car website and you can find you can know what it weighs with and without fuels, uh, what the yeah. what the total length of the vehicle yeah. is versus a wheelbase. I want all that stuff for a watch because I don't understand why anyone in this room wouldn't want that, even if they didn't check it for every watch. Yep. It's yeah. just good to know. And like, there's no way to buy a Doxa and know how it fits unless you know how weird an S uh, Sub 300 is. Yeah. Tiny yeah. dial, big case, still wears small. I don't know how they did it, but that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's another good example on your wrist, too. Absolutely. Yeah, 41 by, I don't even know, probably like 16 or 16 so thick. Movies, yeah. But like also the bracelet about 41 so lug to lug as well. So, yeah. And it wears, it wears fine on strap, too. Uh, one thing that I find very important, a number I always look for also, is the, the, the diameter to the, the lug width. Yep. Because uh, to me, like a 41, I actually remember this with the, the Aqua Dive, is the Aqua Dive or the Aqua Star chronograph in particular, uh, yeah. was that the 22 millimeter lug width on that made it feel like much larger than a 41 necessarily oh, yeah. would have on my yeah, wrist. Like, yeah. It just makes it much like more presence in general. It's a so, lot of strap yeah. or yeah. bracelet yeah. or yeah. whatever you choose. Exactly. It's a so lot more of it. Yeah. Same thing with like the white birch. The white birch. And, you know, like that's a, that's a 22 on there and they usually do odd numbers because, you know, Grant's sake will just do that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. that one's a 22 on a narrow case. So it wears like an integrated yeah. steel bracelet, you know. Yeah. Well, so. Speaking of an integrated steel bracelet or thereabouts, and we, we got here via that Oris, the, the little Oris. Yeah. What about the ProPilot 400? Which I kind of can't get out of my mind. Really? Because okay. years ago it was mm -hmm. you paid eight, nine grand for uh, the caliber the, 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 the high-end yeah. ProPilot, the 115 or the 114. Yeah. And now it's four grand, you get an in-house movement, it's the right size. Uh, I get that's a, a preference, but 40's right in the middle these days, so. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you have this incredible bracelet. Mm -hmm. That's a really hard watch to ignore. And all titanium. And all titanium, yeah. 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 And yeah. My, my, I think we kind of noticed the slight disconnect in the design of the dial to the Rather aggressive case. Mm. The case is, is like a and stealth bracelet. fighter. And like, the I think they could push kind of, the dial yeah. a little bit further. I think so too. Off. It's and a little stark. Yeah. yeah. And I, then the for navy that blue reason, one works, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think the gray works the best on it the for gray. this reason yeah. because it's got the black accents. I think it, it thematically fits with the rest so of the world. What would you do? Would you add a complication? Would you just add some three dimensionality in the some markers? Scales and the hands? on the dial, yeah, right, maybe right, Arabic numerals. 24 hour. 
in, inner circle yeah. or something like that. Something, yeah, something. 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 I'm not a designer, but the great but thing about Oris is they'll do yeah. they'll do all of that if you give them a couple. I know. Years, I right? pressed DJ <laughs> on it uh, here just about an hour ago. But if you, said, it's here, so it's easy to say. But if you walk yeah. over there and try it on your wrist, that's a super impressive watch for the money. Yeah. It doesn't feel like something that costs. It doesn't feel like it has any peers at that price point. Not that it does or doesn't cost four grand. That's a ton of money for yeah. a watch. I, just, you know, I like my five hundred dollars Seikos. And, uh, and, um, but I, I was so impressed by the fact that like they made something that I'm not crazy about pilots watches. I, I find them to be largely indifferent to field watches, uh, these days. And that one felt both modern and special and so Oris. Yeah. But, but this, this brings up a good point. This is another kind of trend that I wanted to touch on is this kind of blurring of the lines of a genre. Like this is kind of a, it's a pilot watch, but it's, it's kind of admitting that yeah you're probably not going to go flying with this watch and you're not going to need like these things. So we're just going to make a more legible, like readable dial. And I see a lot of brands doing the same thing. Ford, it's over there. They've got the campaign. This is not a pilot's watch. This is not, they're kind of confronting it head on. We know you're not going to be diving 1500 feet down below right. with this watch. You're going to be doing your things, you know? So they're not wanting you to think of it as that, yeah. you know? And yeah. then they're kind of just putting it flat out. And I think a lot of brands are kind of wandering into this territory where they're not like, okay, we're not going to make this hardcore like one thing, or if we do, we're going to You know who's done a good job it. of that for a long time is Zinn. Zinn, yeah. the German brand. Yeah. They, yeah. They've always done watches that it might be categorized as a pilot's watch because of some feature of it. With a 104. Yeah, yeah, but it's, they all have like 200 meter water resistance and a, and a rotating bezel, so you could dive with it. Um, I, 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 I'm guilty of getting stuck in certain genres where it's like, <laughs> I won't wear a dive watch if I'm going hiking in the mountains. I need to have a field watch or, you know, it's just, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe other people are like that too, but like, I, I'm trying to break free of that. And I think it's helpful to have a watch that's sort of an all rounder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I think Zinn has done a good job with that. And I think you're starting to see other watches. I think that Black Bay Pro is, is another example. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's. It is what it is. It's 200 meters. It's, you know, 24 hour. It's yeah. It's a good everyday. I mean, works on a strap. Works on a bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Is it professional? Is it a yes. professional? Yeah. Is it professional? Professional what? You know? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> professional what? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think the, the other thing that's worth chatting about, and I would love to get more opinions on, because it's kind of it, I, I see it as being the like kind of the latest thing in. Not so much modern watches, but modern watches being sold at retail. So they're they're like what's happening with wind up or, or just in general. Um, Price sensitivity to specificity of design seems to be at like an all-time high. Mm. The two are hitting each other as an absolute peak. People want to know that what they're buying is a, also a deal, but it's also exactly what they want. Yeah. And my only concern, because I feel the exact same way, but if I zoom out a little bit, if I take a moment and, and kind of step back, I, I just worry like, are we asking, you know, if, if a brand, if brand X, whatever, makes a watch and you go like, well, this is good, but if it was this, I would buy it. <laughs> right? Or if it was this, I would buy it. Or if it was this or this, or there's, you know, there's 50 different this is. Um, I, I think price sensitivity is crucial because it seemed to disappear over the last five years. Yeah. Especially among, not maybe not among those of us in the room here, um, but if, if you follow the grander trend of, of the popularity of steel sports watches from Rolex and even Tudor, and obviously uh, Patek and Audemars and, and kind of bigger, bigger, you know, luxury brands. I do start to worry when you see people buying something that they don't necessarily understand, like they don't feel like Jason was talking about the tribe thing, like I don't want to discount somebody spending 3x what a Daytona cost or 5x what a Daytona cost to get one, but also did they go back and read all the articles? Do they, do they really know what they're buying into? Could you have bought a vintage one, which is probably yep. the move, like yep. all that kind of stuff. And, and everybody's going to come to the, the hobby as they do, and if it, if it excites enthusiasm in that person, then I'm wrong. But I think price sensitivity is crucial, and I'm seeing a real spike in it in the last year. Yeah. Do you think you guys see the same thing? I feel like it's coming back to us slowly. Like it was there right? a decade ago or yeah. eight years ago, something yeah. like that? Like in its sweet spot. I don't know. The Justin could probably speak to this better than, than we could, but I feel like uh, it's going, going through like a much needed kind of correction normalization or something like whatever you want to call it i don't know uh but it's hard to say that about the secondary market because the secondary market will always be based and I'm, I'm pointing at justin who's an incredible dealer and and you should talk to him if you have any interest in something that's probably not available on a you know a glassy surface with lights in it um <laughs> but uh, my thing is more about like that first entry point like we have even seiko when we all got into this, I'm going to generalize. I'm, I guess when I say we, I mean me. But I know I can speak for Jason. Like, Jason, what did you pay for your first SKX, the one seven whatever? Way back when? Yeah, eighty five bucks. Eighty five bucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, it, is it, it like, 
in a unit of enthusiasm that's no more or less than this watch, yeah, right? right? Yeah. But then at the exact same time, the Ranger came out for $100 more than the one from 2014. So yeah. people are moving. Right. Not everyone's right. moving in the same direction. And I think Seiko has a case for going up. Yeah. Um, but I do, I just, I, I like this, this idea of price sensitive. I feel like I've always been price sensitive and, and I like knowing all the options in a market. Yeah. And I think that's mm -hmm. where sites like Worn and Wound and, yeah, and Modinky have a burden to make it clear yeah. that competition matters more than never. I was going to say, especially like earlier on in the days of Worn and Wound, we were much more like stubbornly focused on like, a, you know, a price point of, say sub five grand, like, you know, I'm focusing on all the brands that are in this room, like they, I think were designing for that always. And they had a business model, you know, direct consumer business right. model where they could uh, kind of keep that sort of specificity to exactly what they want. I mean, these are brands that literally designed the watch that they wanted and then priced it for themselves kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. So I feel like it is very live and well in certain groups. And now, you know, I think, yeah, something like that Tudor Ranger, like I was, I was almost more impressed by the price when they first announced it's it. It's what changed the, the you, vibe of the watch for me. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a very good value for what it is um, from a brand that could compete or does compete with watches that are two, 2.5X, you know, the price of, of, of it. Um, but yeah, no, so I, 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 think I, I think I agree with you. I think they're seeing also that the brands, you know, in this room are no longer um, like on the side of the, of the periphery of mm -hmm. the industry. You know, Christopher Ward well, they out there the selling yeah. as much as, as some large Swiss watch brands. So, yeah. Yeah. You know. and, and well deserved. And well deserved, yeah. I mean, the, the huge value the quality if you're price sensitive. You're getting there is and, and you get what you want, and you're buying yeah. from people yeah. who know watches, yeah. which yeah, is kind sure. of what we all want, right? Like, you want to believe the person at Rolex or Tudor or Patek yeah. or whoever, like, loves watches. And the truth is, they might not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they yeah. might know watches really well, which helps yeah. too. I think Formex is a great example of a brand that's here Absolutely. that's like giving you a ton of watch and for for the for the money. Yeah. And, you know, Aster I think and Banks. Aster and Banks, mm -hmm. and yeah. I, you know, I think that you see features out there. Uh, I mean, that that spring-loaded case that they have, and yeah, the, yeah. the carbon material. That you, I mean, if this was I don't, like name any other brands, but there's high other end brands could give some of these features real sexy names and yeah. be selling them for yeah. a lot, a lot of money. And people would be like, that's amazing. And I would pay for it. You know, they kind of present it as this is what it is. And this is what you're getting. And we're enthusiastic about this stuff. And yeah. uh, you see the value there. 100%. And, and, you, you yeah. know, I think. Can we get a chrono check on the Aqualand? 16. Uh oh, that's today. Uh -oh. That's uh -oh. it. We're on, we're on the date. We're on the date. Uh, top left pusher, please. No, no, bottom. Uh Oh, bottom right, bottom right. Mode, bottom mode, left, mode pusher, left. mode pusher. Yeah. It's gonna explode. It's got reset. Bottom left. <laughs> bottom left. <laughs> Go to the chrono. This is a fun little bit, right? Maybe? 42.17. Oh, we're doing fine, okay. We're doing fine. Okay. All right, so Formex is an example of a cool brand that's, yeah. that's doing cool stuff at the Are show. Are we talking here? about cool stuff from the show? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Cool. What else, yeah. what else is? Are you talking about price sensitivity? I mean, go check out the Laurier booth. Oh, my, my dude. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I don't it. think they have a bad design. And they're, they're like, I don't know what the new Zephyr is, the new dress watch. Which I'm not a dress watch guy, but I've tried that bucks. on. I'm like, if I, that, that, I'd be tempted to buy that. Four ninety nine. It's like four hundred ninety nine dollars. Buy some right out of thirty. And you know, yeah, we're just talking about the Ranger, and I, I, yep. I don't recall the name of their, their Ranger esque watch. Falcon three. Falcon. 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 Yeah, version three. You know. Yeah. Falcon. It's yeah. killer. It's beautiful. If you have it, if you didn't t head over and, and take a peek, it's it's killer. Yeah, I mean, it's Miota yeah. movement. It's a it's a smaller size. Well, Thirty six. Thirty six. It's got that kind of a honeycomb textured dial. Arabic numerals. I mean, it's beautiful. Yep, and you yep. put it on your wrist, and it's like, this feels like, okay, I mean, maybe it's a stretch, but like a 1016. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. it has it's that, that vibe to it. But, yeah. And then different lugs, you, yeah. you know, that semi integrated sort nice of bracelet. bracelets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I really like what Laurier is doing. And then the other one that I'm really keen on, and I'm just such a sucker for it, is the, the Benrus. Oh, They've got a type two, two. Yeah. re release or like kind of a reissue. Yeah. Oh, I want that. I really want that. <laughs> I want an original one, but now they've gone yeah. way too expensive. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, with the horn room glasses and the and the sort of like espionage vibe, like <laughs> I think you, yeah, it's like CIA. You watch. need that. To, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. You, you head to Thank the you. jungle. Thank Go you. to the Tell jungle. Tell my wife. If I'll, I'll yeah, I mean, get the credit card. There's it's the justification. Okay. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, for me, I mean, I, I bought the Hasler Instruments, the that spring bar tool. Oh sure. I'm a sucker yeah. for something I can play with on a Zoom call. Yeah. And it's a like it's essentially like a, if you imagine like or if you know the. The like tactile turn. Here's a, a shout out for your boys at Tactile Turn. We're yeah, huge yeah, fans. We have some at the but it's these kind of like very nice mechanical. Uh, not the the pen itself is is a variety of, of uh, inserts, but um, it's a Nautilus colorway. Yeah, too. in the short with the the space nice. cartridge yeah. and um, but they've got kind of the same vibe, like that same level. It's like a, a bolt action um, spring cool. bar tool. Yeah, and the guy, like they're. 
largely handmade. He makes everything by hand. He's spread across the river from, from me in St. Paul. Yeah. Oh, really? um, and I'm such a sucker for buying everything something from someone who made it in yeah, their basement. It's incredible. I love it. Yeah. So he's yeah, probably we, sold out. He only brought like 10. I think he, has, <laughs> like, he makes I, them by hand and they yeah, take yeah. like a week to make each one. I asked yeah. him this morning and they're not expensive. Like for, for what we just said, they're not expensive. Yeah. As far as spring bar tools go, it's the last one you'll need to buy. Yeah. Um, I, I'm impressed. So I bought one. I'm, I'm super happy about it. And then, um, um, oh, uh, Noble Oak. Oh, which yeah. we're drinking right, right here. Noble yeah. Oak. The bourbon. Right, a shout out. Also, any of you are welcome. Uh, we don't need to leave this in the recording or whatever, but uh, any of you are welcome. <laughs> uh, five to six, we're doing a TGN hangout. Uh, it can be a TGN worn and wound hangout, of course. And uh, we've got a, a, a Noble Oak old fashioned with rosemary and some other stuff. Wow. Um, uh, find Jason or I for tickets. First one's on us for sure. Uh, any of you guys need a top up? Mo Noble Oak minute? On I would say mine's the last. <laughs> oh, you're, you're finishing the splash. Yeah. Oh, Good down there. Yeah, I'm okay for now. Thank you, though. Yeah. Top of? Yeah. All right. What about you, Zach, from the show? Oh, God. Um, I think a watch that really surprised me. I've seen it sort of in various iterations over uh, the last couple of years uh, is the the Solabs Automatic. I don't know if there's a specific oh, yeah. name That's for that. Oh, yeah. That's the first one on my list. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw God, them last just night. The, they're killer. They're yeah. so great. So so much fun. And just, I love the, I love it when you see a design that feels like, like they, Oh, in some ways, I'd never seen a watch before. They're like, yep. this is what I want a watch to be. These are yep. the shapes I want, all those numbers and stuff. I don't care about that. And then bringing color in a very creative way, using the date and day to like build a color combination. Like an active complication. gradient, a gradient that yeah. changes. Yeah, so it's yeah. constantly yeah. shifting. And then just, I mean, the tones of the colors, these beautiful, almost matte ceramic pastel colors, like just totally out there, unique. And, uh, and and then solid feeling too. Like it's not just a toy. It's like a beautifully right. made yeah. solid yeah. timepiece. Yeah, that's yeah. on my list for sure. Yeah, yeah they have yeah. a black one over there. Yeah, PVD these, one's striking. Just, the dial, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just pops off of yeah. that thing. Yeah. It's so cool looking. I'm always like loosely obsessed with brands that have managed to do that like MBNF, like double. You're like, oh, what is yeah. that? Yeah. And you can still read the time, but it's something yeah. else. It doesn't look like anything that yeah. any of us probably have on in the room. Yeah. When somebody and who looks at their watch and often isn't even looking at the time, yeah. like there it's like, it's just art that's presented yeah. to you and then you're yeah. like, oh, by the way, it's and, and, and Please, uh, SO Labs, uh, I apologize if I'm wrong, but I think the quartz ones are like 180 bucks, 175 bucks. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's the, yeah, the early And then the, the Miyota ones are like under a grand. Yeah. And I, I saw the Miyota ones last night, and I think, I think all they're actually Salida SWs in these new ones. Is that what's in them? Yeah, oh, yeah, the new man. ones. Yeah, that's so. uh, I mean, they're really super fun. And yeah. it, earlier today, uh, we saw a, a fella came by the TGN uh, stand and, and had a Mad One. Oh uh, yeah, the, the blue yeah. I've never first seen one. edition so Mad cool. One, which yeah. is uh, you know like a, a limited creation from Max Busser. And I just think like, don't oh, get me wrong, I want spinner. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, like I, I want stuff like that, like that uh, that Aqualand. I want stuff like my SPB or my my Seikos. But I also love the option of spending not a fortune on having something that's like only for watch nerds. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And the blue one is a major flex now. It is now. Yeah, Series One not being red. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Let's check the time. Yeah. Another one for me that I want to give a shout out to is uh, the Fortis Stratoliner. Huh. Uh, I know you're not a chrono guy, but the dial on that watch I find Six. really interesting. It huh. looks like a have to check that unfinished out. prototype or something that they're like, no, I like this, and it looks it, like yeah. a, like a CAD design file Super or flat. something just placed like, into there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very strange looking in a cool way. Yeah, yeah. and they're, they're doing really cool things and testing the space and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, I like the. I, you know, I think I think we probably probably get to a Q and A in the next few minutes, but Let's I think Andrew yeah. Dane's yeah. worth checking out as well because that's one that I've only seen online for. Yes. What, Always two years, three out. years? If yeah. you can get to the booth. Every if, time if you guys have you got to cut your way in. You get a machete. Go. And ordain. Oh, yeah. And right. ordain, oh, yeah. yeah. So cool. Real sweetheart running, running yeah. the show there. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and the variety of dials. The one thing I would say focus on is think about what he's making there, which is a slightly reflective dial that's still hyper legible. It's not easy to do. Yeah. He makes it look easy. But if you actually think about it, like if, if you zoom out a little bit, it's like harder to do. And I'm, uh, that's another one I'm real tempted to be. Yeah. To put, take one home. They've, they've got a couple different sizes, and they've got like a green field watch sort of one. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, beautiful dials there. Worthy, you got to see those in person uh, if you haven't yet. So. Agree. The value of, of a wind-up. Yeah. All right. Should we? Move, should, does anybody have questions? Uh, uh -huh. So before we get to questions, you'll re you'll say them. We don't have a microphone to share around, yeah, we'll and then them. one of us will repeat them. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the microphone. Yeah. That, that's an interesting question. Uh, so so he's asking if if we have a reference point. Or a watch that we've owned as this is a size that a works baseline. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yeah. without 
deviating from that, we kind of, we've kind of, if we've locked ourselves into those size because of a watch that we've owned, uh, basically. Uh, yeah, I think for, for me, I have a, a, a Seiko 7006 um, that, uh, that I liked for in, in, in more for a long time, and that, that was kind of like what I used. I think it's 41 millimeters. There's not much of a lug to it. Uh, so, uh, but it took me years to kind of get out of, of that comfort zone. And I used to be in, a, in the same place of like, I, you know, I have to have a watch that's in this. It can't be over this diameter. It has to be in this. So I, for sure, it limited how I thought about the watches that I could potentially wear on my wrist. <clears throat> The easy answer would be something like a, a Submariner because it's so, or an XKX. For sure. um, but for me, it, it, I'm going to spin it slightly differently. It's it's a watch that once I wear a bunch of others and then I come back to, it's like comfort zone. It's like yeah. it's like ah, oh. and it's it's a Doxa Sub 300. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, okay. it's yeah. you wear a lot of other watches, you know, Bremont or this or a, a Seiko or something. Everything feels a little too tall, a little too heavy, maybe a little too small, whatever it might be. And the way that that Sub 300 fits. It's, it's thin, it's flat, and, and just the shape of that case sort of sits on your wrist like a little cuff, and it's mm -hmm. just so comfortable. Not on the bracelet that it comes with, but, no. but like on a strap <laughs> yeah. you know, or, or even a rubber or something. And if um, anyone comes to that hangout we'll do after this, I have one. Uh, it's yeah. on my, yeah, my lovely to wife's wrist. Yeah. Uh, you're more than welcome to try it on. Yeah. Uh, but that is a watch that defies every, almost every dimension. Yeah. Um, yeah. to become this weirdly, I, I love it. If you have a seven, seven and a half inch wrist, I think it might be perfect depending on your taste. Yeah. For me, for a long time, it was the SKX, like for years. And then I, the only time in my watch uh, buying, selling career, I, I, I came upon a Rolex that was affordable at the time and I bought a 16570 and that's kind of become my, my basis. But I, I think there's some credence to what Jason said, like, I think if you can, if if it fits within the confines of a sub 300 for me, it'll probably be fine. But these days, I also I try and be a little bit adventurous, not lug to lug, but any other dimension. I find <laughs> is you can ignore it. If if it's too thick, it's a summer watch when I'm not wearing a jacket, or uh, uh, you know you know this is how I do most you know most of the time I'm, I'm rolled up, um, and that's that's why like uh, where I I might have. Let's say Seiko is still making the SKX 007. I might not be that interested in buying another one. I have I have an older one, mm -hmm. um, but add a GMT movement and I'm back in. Even if by today's standards, it would be called kind of a thick watch, right? Yeah. 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 What do you think? It's a tough question. I, I I feel like I've I've just rotated watches so much over the years, and like the the dominant watch in my collection has kind of just periodically shifted. So. I feel like at some point it might have been like a Sin 556, which was oh, yeah. like for a while, like you're like, that's That'll the only 38.5 millimeter watch I can find on the market, you know, and like, yeah. and that now, speedy you know, reduced. Yeah, yeah. well, and, you <laughs> know, it. now I have a speedy reduced and like, and that's the, you know, 39. And that is actually the Speedmaster that's like stayed in my collection yeah. the longest, and I don't intend on selling it. I love it. It's to really death. charming. You've had other really um, cool Speedmasters. Yeah, I, I, and like Speedy Pros are just the, the classic Moonwatch size case, like, I think that that's a actually a really good benchmark for like yes something that has larger numbers does can wear well, um, but yeah. I, I mentioned never hold on to them. Yeah. yeah. But I do find if it's like, it's it's very safe if it's if between forty and thirty six I almost don't need to know any other number <laughs> for me. Yeah. You know. Really. Occasionally, but like but then like you're saying like if it's occasionally it gets something weird where like a lug to lug will be fifty and you'll be like that doesn't work yeah. anymore. Yeah, like a Nomos or, Orion is a beautiful watch. And if yeah, you, yeah. If you have a work. flat enough wrist, it works great. Look yeah. for miles. But it's kind well, of the like the lugs is, keep going. Yeah. The smaller ones on those don't bother me. And I, I yeah, I had a, yeah, Nomos, you say, I have a club. Like that was actually one of like, the first. I love the Club 36. So yeah, the 36 millimeter club, I got that years ago. It was like my first, I think like one of my first watches under over $500. And unfortunately it's been broken for about mm, four or five years. <laughs> <laughs> like, instead of getting that fixed, I just buy new watches. That's, <laughs> but, um, yeah, everyone always has a comment like, "Oh, the vampire lug, like teeth lugs on that thing." I was like, "Really? It's like never drove it just me nuts." Wears well, yeah. you know, like the club's such a cool watch. It just yeah. it, it's a weird thing. I'll say this to all you. Well, I guess I'm, I'm saying it Say to, to the, the world, to the world uh, uh, screen as well. I just wish they make a brush version. Yeah, was that weird? Mm. Yeah, they, they did. Don't do brush that often. They, they, did, they did a brush did version one, with. And it was barely even brushed. They did it was a kind of. A, it was there, was, there was a jeweler was like that they worked with somewhere. Yeah, and timeless I, or topper. Yeah, yeah. There, was one, there, was, there was another one where they, they did a, whatever a bead blasted and hardened case. Yeah. And they made like 40 of them. I mean, we need to see more of these. Yeah. I'm completely on board. I said this to them I love, before. I love a Campus 36. <laughs> yeah. I think that's like a super wearable. It's, it, it's my favorite. It's also like the least expensive thing in their lineup. Yeah. But the, the full polish, I just, I would, it would just be, um, 
<laughs> it would just look ridiculous after about a month on my wrist. It would just be <laughs> half covered in scratches. That's all right. After a year, it'd look great. Yeah, exactly. Give, give me a brush so God, I can yeah. slow it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great question. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks yeah, so much. It's interesting to think we about. we got another? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Or anyone? <laughs> yeah. Let's go. You have another one. So we're being asked uh, whether or not after the pandemic we're feeling a need to grow or uh, intentionally push towards growth uh, for... Uh, I'll speak and Jason will speak to uh, the Grenada. Um, I'll come out and say, like, I feel like, you know, we mentioned this when, when we did the 200th episode just recently. Uh, Congrats, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Yeah. Um, uh, no, uh, I, I feel very strongly that communities have a, a fixed, uh, a happy size and we're approaching that. <laughs> and if it grows beyond that, that's OK. It's fine. But we're not hunting for that. Um, I really like that right now we're at a point where we can reply to emails. Yeah. We can ship everything that people want. We can, um, we can cover all of the Q and A's that come in. And I feel like if, if it were to double quickly, which is kind of how things work, you, you stay in the game for seven, eight years, and then all of a sudden you're an overnight success. Um, and I, I'm not <laughs> saying that's what's happened to us. It's what happens to bands, that sort of thing, right? Everybody says like, oh, all of a sudden their yeah. seventh album they're world famous, and you're like, yeah, they've been working for 20 years. <laughs> um, and and no, Jason and I are, are we you know, we're not a great businessman. Uh, we're not uh, overly commercially minded. Both of us have other other paths for making a living, covering rent, that sort of stuff, which is important, I think. Um, I would say that if anything, the pandemic showed me the value of all of you, because uh, it was not easy. Uh, I think if you listen, if you go back and listen to the isolation tapes, there was constant. Um, construction at my house I was going through what well, if I go back and listen to them which is kind of painful now like probably a small mental health crisis which isn't isn't rare I think a lot of people had that experience um, mine was maybe just focused on the fact that my house was shaking nine ten hours a day when I was trying to also record a podcast that I care a lot about um, and and I, I don't think like I don't I don't really know where I would be if it wasn't for uh, the folks who listen to the pod and who send in these incredibly like generous and kind, or the mean ones, like the ones that tell us we got something wrong. I, like everybody's got to eat some crow. You know, you guys know if you listen to the pot, I love to do it. It's one of my favorite flavors. Um, but you know, it, it's it's been a real learning experience. I think the last couple of years in just what the value of the community is, and, and we're not. I have less than no interest in ruining that, and especially seeing what's gone on at the table and around the around the scene, and you guys coming. I, I'm having trouble making contact with eye contact with any of you. <laughs> Feeling emotional at the moment, um, but no, I just I, I probably said too much. But uh, I, I love all of you, and, and for listening. And, and this isn't something that we care to make more any a penny more than we need to keep making it, which is where we're at. So, would you yeah. say anything different? Or no, I, I would, I just, probably I would echo the same. I, I would echo the same. And I always tell James, like I, every. Every company I've worked for in my whole life, it's like they, they grow to a certain level and then it becomes less appealing, you know? I mean, I remember the first company I worked for, one of the first companies I worked for, I liked it because I'd go into the office and they had, there were people kicking soccer balls around and there were dogs running around between the cubicles and whatever and everyone was kind of having fun. And then they started growing and they started growing and then the rules came in and then everything kind of got too big and they tried to branch out and whatever and it just kind of got less fun. And what we do now is still fun. We're still two guys that just chat over Zoom and yep. record our sides of the podcast. James, you know, edits it. We put it out every week. And sometimes it's Tuesday morning when we're recording. We're like, what should we talk about today? And it's like, <laughs> uh, let's talk about this. And it's like, okay, great, we'll do it. And we just do it. And it's been fun every single week. Yeah. And it's been rewarding. And then, you know, the evidence is here. I mean, yeah. when people come to our table and we're telling us how much it means to them and how much they enjoy it, I and mean, it's yeah. really meaningful. I don't want to. I don't want to grow for the sake of growth. I like yeah. it organic. And I'd say if you like it, um, keep listening. If you don't like it, at least give me a chance. Send me an angry email. I'll contextualize it appropriately, I promise. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and we'll pivot. And if there's something you'd love to, for us to talk about, send it again, thegrainado.gmail.com. Uh, it, it's a real two-way street is how we operate. The, but the, the sub stack has been incredible. People are in there chatting. And, and um, this sounds promotional. And that's not what I meant. I meant it as a thank you. So. Yeah, uh, I know that uh, people have said in the last couple of days here that they liked the show because it was this kind of calm point in, in a time that wasn't that calm, and that's exactly what it was for Jason and I. It was something we knew what we had every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, get into Zoom and chit-chat with a buddy, and, uh, and, and in a way it feels like we were chit-chatting with all of you, and that's what, uh, a huge thank you to the Warren and Wound and Wind Up teams uh, for making us part of this because it, it meant that we could extend that chat face-to-face, uh, yeah. -face, yeah. which I, I don't take lightly at all. Yeah. yeah.
Look, this is a small world at the end of the day. We've known I each other so. for, for many, many years. Uh, so, you know, I think we're all in this to the same end. We all have the same enthusiasm and passion for this. This is what kind of drives both of us. You know, I will say on our end, the, 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 the podcast is kind of meant to be complimentary to, to what we're doing editorially um, on the site. And, and that's really kind of what, whatever we find interesting. Uh, you know, I, I guess over the last year or so since I got here, it's just really how can I incorporate more of the voice of the reader uh, into what we're doing uh, on the website, on the podcast. That's kind of where my head is at. Um, and people that just think differently than me and find things interesting that hadn't crossed my mind. Yeah. I think those are the people that I really want to embrace um, that kind of show me more of the hobby than I realized was there. So. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, <laughs> I could go on for really way too long. We're yeah. talking about the, <laughs> the whole thing, but you know, I think the 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 pandemic was you know a time where we just reflect a lot as a business. You know, we went into it as a much smaller company and came out much larger and with a lot of really great you know talent within our team. And now it's sort of about like maximizing that and maximizing our channels. But we're still independent. We're still bootstrapped, and we kind of stick to that sort of level of you know ownership over everything and that's very important yeah. to us we really you know just hold like authenticity and you know as a core of our of our business and whenever it starts to feel like that goes too far we kind of were quick to rein that in and so yeah i mean we're, we're still growing and obviously this this event is evidence of that you know I, we would have done this in 2020 but we couldn't but we came back and did it much larger than we would have before yeah. um new york is gonna be even bigger and you know we're finding out where the kind of the limits of this are and how people you know want to ha have it like you know from the audience from the brands and yeah just figuring figuring out figuring out that that comfortable like you're saying it's not it's big big we're still getting larger but we're not trying to take over the Javits Center with this or anything like that you know yeah. um, I hope Jeez. <laughs> uh, but yeah you know still a lot of room for growth but all hopefully well done yeah. at the right pace at the right pace yeah. good one. Yeah. Thank Another? you. Yeah. I'll, 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 jump in, I'll jump in and I'll say that uh, Manasse over there. Oh, wait, repeat the question. Oh, oh I'm wait. sorry. Yeah. If there's any watch that we could buy at this show, budget, no uh, limits, it has to be here at the show. I'm saying there's a Manasse over there with no date that they've like had this natural paint on the dial. I'm, I'm not sure whatever. Oh, it's quite striking. Yeah. I don't know. Their cases are. are they yeah. defy my simple explanation. It, uh, it, I'll just put it that way. Thanks for bringing them up because I, you know, it's easy to forget. <laughs> There's so many brands, but like, it's those are you know watches that you really can't see anywhere else but here right now, yeah. and they are absolutely fascinating. Um, yeah. So much craft and so much engineering just goes into each one of those watches. So, yeah, I mean that that's a really good one to kind of bring up. Like it's sort of like the, you know Anna Dane, like the there's the level of handcraft that goes into yeah. them, which you're not seeing often at these price points and yeah, um, yeah they, what Manasse is doing just totally out there and original. I, I would say though for me right now, and you already said it, but the, the Benner's Type 2, oh, like that's oh, just man. a watch that's been on that's my fine. list. Oh, sorry, yeah. you're going to say it too. <laughs> so I'm going to take that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah such an excellent one. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, I, I was going to have a, a major cop out because we've been so busy at our table that I really haven't had time to walk around and even look at what everybody's got, but the Type 2 from the ones that I knew were coming here, yeah. I made a beeline this morning and I looked and I was like, this is this Great is the right. one. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'm such a sucker for that watch. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the price just seems right. It seems like a good, I think it's thirteen ninety five. It just seems yeah. like... They even came down a little from makes the Type sense. 1. Yeah. And it's, yeah. 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 It's, it, that's a tough one. Um, you know, Aster and Banks is here. I'm a big fan of theirs. I've written up a bunch of their stuff. Uh, Montes here. I don't. I don't know if you get a better value on like a watch made by an obsessive team. Mm. They just love details. Um, but for me, it, it, it's because it's fresh for me. It is the Anordain stuff. That green dial sort of field watch. Like to do a green that's reflective, but still the hands don't get lost. It's not like any other greens. Uh, and and that that's really tempting for me, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Also, yeah, citizen. <laughs> citizen. We're just yeah. looking good on time, in case citizen. anyone's worried. We're looking good on time. <laughs> Another question? Dive report. Oh, well, since repeat since, the question. Hmm? Do you want to repeat oh, the yeah. question? He wants uh, a dive report from this morning. <laughs> um, and since my dive buddy's in the room, I can't exaggerate. We were talking on the on the drive over here that, you know, her, you know, since nobody else was there, we could say that we were, you know, it was 200 feet deep. We did an hour of deco, and there was a shark and there was sure, yeah, else, yeah. But <laughs> three sharks. Yeah, three sharks. Yeah, uh, it was fun. You know, any diving is good. It was a it, the first dive was quite shallow, and it was on a kind of a cool sunken barge. Um, we went out of Hammond, Indiana, and uh, we went out with a, uh, on a dive boat there. The weather was a little choppier than we had hoped for. Uh, visibility wasn't great, but the, w the water was warm. And uh, 
So it was kind of a shallow wreck. I think max depth on that first dive was about 33 feet. Some kind of cool swim throughs oh, on, nice. a, on a barge that was uh, sunk in the, the 1920s. Um, so that was fun. It was very warm. I was diving in a wetsuit today, um, which I was pleased about on the first dive. But then on the second dive, we, we had quite a long boat ride. And we went to a wreck of the Louisville, which was a, a wooden steamer that was sunk in the 1800s. And um, that was a bit deeper. It was 55, 57 feet, I think, was my max. And uh, there was a thermocline, which means the water temperature drops below a certain point. And I was quite chilly. Then I wished I had my dry suit because I was wet and I had this long boat ride with the wind blowing across me. And, uh, and Ben and I, he was also in a wetsuit. And we, uh, we kind of bailed early. We, we did kind of a 24, 25 minute dive. Took a few photos. I brought my old film Nikonos underwater camera. No, cool. Took a few photos and, uh, yeah. and uh, but it was fun. I mean, it was great to dive with some, some good buddies and uh, people I haven't even met in person, but have been communicating with for years about diving and dive watches. And, and uh, so it was great. It was a really good time. Those cool. photos go on Swimproof? Uh, I'll put them up on Instagram URL. when they get, uh, oh, when, they get uh, when they get uh, scanned. That was my when pitch. The, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate Come that. Come on, yeah. Noble Oaks. No, no, yeah, right, 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 right. No, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see how the photos turn out. Yeah, it was a bit murky. But we'll another one over here? See. Yeah. All weather report. Uh, oh. All right. <laughs> My, my good friend of the last few days is, uh, is saying it doesn't really feel like a, uh, a TGN. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, obviously, we weren't meant to be broadcasters necessarily, right? Or maybe I'm too used to public radio, where you, know, you get some weather every 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, we're supposed to offer a weather report. Uh, I don't know what the weather is back home. I can give the marine forecast. I mean, I was just out on the water. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I think the winds were out of the south and east at about 16. The yeah, waves Chicago's were, pretty uh, The waves were a little, a little bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> humid. It was, a, it was a sticky walk over over here this morning yeah, for sure yeah, but uh, right. a lovely city i've been impressed by chicago feels a lot like toronto um may maybe as i get to know it better i'll find more little pockets of uh of, of fun but uh yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of you who are local you've got a lovely city for sure yeah. i'm going to try and see the waterfront before i go every city's defined by its waterfront i think yeah. if, if they got it we got another question so another fantastic question uh being asked if we feel that um you spend more on a watch do you feel like you should wear it more value over time uh, that sort of uh, thing. We have a, the comparison between a SKX 781 and a planet, a 42 millimeter Planet Ocean. Both, you know, obviously great dive watches, but of a different ilk, yeah. which is kind of the point here. Uh, what, what, what do you guys figure? Like, if you if you spend a lot of money on a watch, do you feel like you have to wear it? I mean, eh, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like there are bad examples, though. It's like it's really a sickness at this point. Same <laughs> by so many watches. Like, none of them get their you know sure. enough time on the wrist, but. Um, you know, I, th I, I, I do like the concept of cost per wear, which for some it was like something that I first, you know, heard of like with like shoes, you know, boots and, you know, Grant Stone out there is like a good example. They're, they're friends of, of, of ours. Like there was some psychological leap for me to go beyond like an $80 sneaker and a $350 pair of boots. And yeah, it's like, sure. yeah, you're going to wear them for 20 years when they're made like that. And you're going to, eventually, what, I don't think you figured it out, but <laughs> the cost per wear is going to be, you know, really, really low. Um, so I guess you could think about that with watches, but then... They're so much more precious in a certain way. And certain watches, you, you want a baby, you know, like, a, you know, I, I don't have a gold watch, but if I had a gold dress watch, I'd probably try not to smack it into door jams on a daily basis. That's my, those are my biggest enemy, I think, in the watches is door jams. <laughs> um, you know, so like that might not get the same sort of logic of wearing as, um, yeah, just a good steel watch that, you know, yeah, I spend a decent amount on, I just want to, I don't want to wear and be fearless with. One watch, uh, the Grand Seiko SBGA375, I think it is, that I, I picked up Spring Drive originally. That was going to be a watch that was going to keep pristine, but I liked wearing it too much. And then I was like, yeah, I spend this money on this. I got to wear the shit out yeah, of it. Yeah. And I have, and I've, I've damaged it, and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, that's so a barrier cool. that yeah. I think you, you have to cross have to get with the expensive it, yeah. watch. And I think this is a balance yeah. that we all probably confront of, oh, this is kind of a lot for this watch, but I bought it, and I do I know you guys don't like to consider yourselves collectors, which means you're not buying it to just like set it there. You're yeah, buying right, it buy to it use it, yeah. right? So it's good, but at the same time, oh, I spent a lot on this, so I kind of want to be careful with it, but I've got to use it. Yeah. But then you cross that line and you're like, well, I guess I'm using it. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I think Jason might agree, but for me, I buy watch for moments. 
Yeah. Right? Like a loom dial, I want to go in from outside. I want to I want to be outside on the porch with my friends and walk inside to grab something cold from the yeah. fridge into a dark room and you're like, "Oh." Yeah. <laughs> and my sun like cuz I get my sunglasses on, right? <laughs> and with my Explorer, like I bought my Explorer 2 uh, for my 30th birthday and immediately took it up Baker on the outside of my no. jacket. No. Right? I had a Garmin on one wrist and the Explorer on the other and that's what I wanted. And for me, watches are about moments, especially now, because you don't need to wear a watch. Or you can just wear an Apple watch, you can wear a, anything that has time on it, right? It doesn't make any difference. Things that aren't even watches. And uh, for me, it's about moments. So if I spend a bunch of money on a, on a watch, I want it to return these certain moments yeah. for me. And the Explorer has done that, and, and that's why it remains in, in my care uh, and hasn't been gone on, uh, you know, passed on to somebody else. And when it comes to dive watches, you know, or, or travel watches, like, I like buying them about the hopefulness of a moment, whether it's diving on a new watch, uh, diving on a new wreck, or um, uh, visiting a country I've never been to before, or, or for an event I've never, or, or people I haven't seen in a long time, right? Yeah. Some of you uh, who we've talked to on email for years and I've never met, <laughs> I haven't seen Jason for years, uh, you know, for that sort of thing. And, and, and it's, nice, it's nice to have watches kind of as a, a sort of background, almost like the soundtrack for some of this stuff, if you're, that, if you're that into it. I mean, we're all sitting here in the same room, so I assume we're all into it that much, but uh, that may sound crazy to someone who wouldn't come to wind up, but I think if you come to the show, I think you'd understand like, these things are kind of these little touch points yeah. that you kind of attach memories to. It's, it's a very human thing for a thing that's not that human. Yeah, right? yeah. And yeah. Uh, I love it. I, I love it for that reason, I, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that other than to say that you know, we have this concept of the beater, the watch that you, yeah, the cheap yeah, watch yeah, yeah. you have that you wear for rough duty and, you know, things that you don't want to ruin the watch. And I think, I kind of feel the opposite. I feel like the more you spend on a watch, the more you should expect of it, the better mm -hmm. it should perform. Yeah. You know, you should be able to do more with that watch because you spent yeah. more on it. Yeah. And I think you should wear it more often. I mean, yeah. I, not because of any sort of calculation or equation. It's just, I, I think that... Um, if you buy a Rolex Submariner, I mean, this, this is a watch that was designed to do a certain thing and it cost more than anything else, you know, Seiko or whatever it is. And like, you should, you should yeah. put it to that test. Yeah. yeah. And I think Rolex would like you to take it to the edge of hell and back. Yeah. They'd be thrilled. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. I think that. I, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. And because I, I was going to make a comment about. You know, I think it's one thing to like, I'm lusting after a data graph or something. Oh, it wouldn't be great to have that. <laughs> but then it's just like, whoa. Would I be giving myself the opportunity to experience those moments in a watch like that? Probably less so. But then it, a memory uh, occurred to me that you went running uh, in a data graph in uh, Dresden, I believe. I did, yeah. I had a loaner uh, so data graph, and I was in, in uh, Dresden, Germany, visiting Langa, and they loaned me yeah. a data graph. And I went out for a, I was jet lagged, and I got up at 4 a.m., and I went for a run around Dresden just for some exercise and I used the data graph to time my run. So, so what he just said, he actually, he actually does. He's, yeah. he's, he's Probably ill-advised, I don't think they ever gave me another watch to try on. I posted a photo of it and they're like, no more. I think like a platinum weight on your arm. Yeah, right. Right. it was a good workout. Yeah. It's a little bit extra. Resistance yeah. extra. for sure. Yeah. I mean, if I, uh, it's funny you bring up the data graph because I mean, it, uh, among my list of dream watches would be something like a Wanga One. Yeah. Uh, in solid gold, maybe even closed case back, that sort of thing. Maybe someday in the future, who knows. Um, and it's okay if it doesn't happen, of course. It's just uh, yeah. an object of fascination. But that would be one I would, I would be like, all, like cutting the grass. Yeah. Like, mm. like well, solid, is this solid case back because it's like a flex to not yeah. see the movement on yeah. a long I think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, but this is, this. Is, yeah, I think you capture something there and it's about those moments and you want to give yourself the opportunity to experience as many of those moments as you can in those watches. And, I, and this is one thing that I will say about, Justin, you cover your ears, uh, vintage watches sometimes. And I've had some really cool vintage watches that I find myself yeah, not yeah. wearing because I'm afraid of this or that. So I find myself wearing a a modern version of, of whatever, experiencing more in that yeah. watch. Therefore, it starts to mean more to me than maybe this other watch that like I might aesthetically like a bit more or like how it fits on my wrist a little bit more, but I end up wearing this when I'm doing this stuff. Yeah. Fishing with my kid or playing catch or whatever, like those are the kind of things that I want to be doing in a watch and I want to watch that I can do that. In, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I mean, I feel like it's been a theme for the last 50 episodes, you know, over the pandemic of, uh, for Graynado. It's just like, don't be afraid to let your enthusiasm for watches be about your enthusiasm for watches. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm in some ways part of the problem. Jason, some of you guys are part of the problem. Oh, like, yeah. We all write from a perspective of, you know, uh, proven taste and, and knowing the market and these sorts of things. But like, also, if something is, makes you happy, 
just do that. Yeah. Because yeah, it doesn't matter. This is only a hobby. It's it's about loving something that um, that isn't going to love you back. Uh, and uh, but but should be part of you know some experiences and, and and I think that works out regardless of what you spend if you spend a ton of money and you want to get that wear be that guy that wears his datagraph for the run yeah. right yeah. wears his uh, wears his whatever while cutting the grass but um, I, and I, I think that the important thing is to understand that the media side of it is just one cycle yeah. and it's going to change every two or three weeks yeah. um, the personal side of it is you're buying something that theoretically someone made a brand made to last yeah. a lifetime yeah and, and it doesn't have to last with you but you should enjoy it and if you're buying a watch because of the market pause for a moment yeah <laughs> please yeah i think that's a, t- a, a tough position currently yeah. for sure yeah any other questions uh, so uh, we've got a question asking uh, why has the sky dweller not become kind of a classic in the professional lineup um, you know, it, it offers a huge amount of um, technology and innovation. It's, it's arguably like the biggest flex in their lineup uh, tech-wise. And it's also like aesthetically one of the more uh, nuanced designs they have. There's hidden things in there. And, uh, and you're asking maybe why it hasn't seen the come up that others have. Uh, I, I have a theory. Uh, what, what do you guys think? I mean, I can speak to myself. Uh, I, I 100% agree with you. It's the most innovative thing they've done in a very long time. Uh, I just don't find it very pleasant on the wrist, <laughs> personally. Um, it's, yeah, I guess it comes down mm-hmm. to that for me. And a lot of the classic professional models from Rolex uh, that I like a lot are imminently wearable. Like when I think of the Daytona, it's like one of the most wearable chronographs I've ever put on my wrist. Uh, it's a simple thing that so you don't really think about in that way. And you know, I feel like there's, there's a few details like that on the Skydweller, just ergonomically that just quite aren't in that realm. Uh, that's just me personally, though. I've never, I've never thought about it too much, um, but I do think you could be onto something with the, the fact that there is no historical lineage to it, so it just doesn't have those like long-standing roots. It's not as much part of the like just the the, the culture of of the Rolex brand. Um, that would be, a, I think that's an interesting. That would be something worth exploring. Um, yeah, there's, there's no the Everest. Name, the name is kind of gnarly, or... though. Maybe it's it's also it sounds like a Bond movie. That yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jason, I'm, I'm, you know, if you if you want to go one direction, in, in my mind, it's because they they went with it. They made a complicated watch, and it's not something you expect from Rolex. So when you go to a Rolex uh, boutique or or whatever, and you see their range of watches, it's going to be like time, time and a date, and a chronograph. <laughs> easy to understand. It's relatively easy to understand. And then they made this watch that like has an incredible array of complication that you have to have on your wrist to understand. And if you guys don't know the Sky Dweller. I arguably, I would say that Rolex doesn't explain it that well on their yeah. website. They're, they don't know how to because they're so used to explaining very conventional watches that almost don't need an explanation, right? If you want a Submariner, you probably know the first 10% or the 95% of why a Submariner is special. The Sky, Sky Dweller is like weirdly niche. Uh, I've listened to people who know about watches on various podcasts, like not understand the annual calendar display. And you go like, 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 like and, and then I was like, how is this hard? And I go to their website and you go, no, nope, they made it too hard. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I think it's a translation thing. Uh, a lot of, uh, of, of complicated watches, and, and I deal with this because I talk about GMTs all the time. GMTs require a lot of translation. The difference between one or the other or the next or a world timer. Um, it's, it's down to these little specifics. And they made a very subtle watch that hides a lot of complexity. Yeah. I think if you're deep into Rolex, which I know you are, and you know a lot about watches, which I know you do, uh, that watch is very special, but they have not translated that to the 90% of their audience that doesn't really understand watchmaking or what an annual calendar is, at the very base level, it's right? A, it's a precious metal only Rolex, is, is it? Uh, they do a steel, it's steel with white gold bezel now, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. interesting. That was just last year. It's like impossible uh, to go. Two years ago. 21 or 20? Two X. Two years ago. Okay. Yeah. I mean, pr- pretty sweet thing. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't disagree that it is a bit of a hidden gem in there. And the only reason we're not seeing that happen on the secondary market is because people don't understand what it is. Yeah. Mr. Chris. Wow. So, so in summary, what did we hope to get out of this journey when, when we, we started, started on podcast. it? Uh, contra- um, and our careers are in the podcast. Yeah, either. Either? I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, Jason and I started writing for Hodinkee around the same time. It was like 2008, and, 2009? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we just did it because we liked 
watches yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and uh, came across Ben in, in some way. You mean Eric Wind, uh, all Wisconsin guys, Yeah. Uh, by the way. Uh, so I had no expectation of, of it. I mean, I had my career was kind of like going like this. And then uh, Hodinkee started to become a Hodinkee, uh, what you know it as today. So that kind of took over a lot of uh, shaping my career, I guess, for the long term. And, uh, and uh, here I've kind of, here I am now, with one, and I've known well, these guys yeah. for a long time. <laughs> uh, so, it, you know, yeah. it's kind of a natural evolution. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd say for me, with Warner Wound, I mean, we did not have very much in the way of expectations when we first started. It's really just for fun. So, yeah. very, 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 very far beyond what I could have ever expected. Yeah. yeah and I, I think as far as CGN goes, we talked a little bit about this in the 200th episode. Like, uh, we wanted to have conversations. I wanted to talk with Jason about watches. <laughs> and, um, and we had this sort of um, self important concept that maybe a few other people would would kind of enjoy the same conversation much like I wanted to listen to conversations about cars mm -hmm. and um, and technology and and new cameras and stuff like that and and, and I still do uh, I love I'm a you know, huge huge podcast nerd I remain um, but I, I think that was the goal so we didn't set out ever thinking we'd have more than 100 people who wanted to listen in and maybe send in a question occasionally uh, uh, the rest came from arguably like support from the network you know, we talked about uh, Ben sending out uh, or publishing a post uh, that's Ben, ben Climbers who founded Hodinkee, uh, publishing a post very early on, like within weeks of our first episode, talking about the fact that we had started a podcast. At the time, I think there weren't a ton of watch podcasts. You know, there had been a few. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and beyond that, it was just kind of a snowball. Um, and we're, we're arguably we're still on our heels, like just trying to keep up with it, especially when we come to something like this and like have no idea what to expect as far as. Uh, folks taking us out on dives and uh, and and you know wanted to hang out and bring us bottles of Malort and <laughs> all sorts of stuff. So no, I mean I, I still I don't love the idea of having expectations for most things in my life. No. Um, I think fatherhood taught me that to a large expect uh, a, a, a large point. Like no. um, you can't expect what it is. They're they're like little microcosms that you just get to orbit around uh, if you're lucky. And, uh, and I think that's taught me a lot about what it is to try and make something for a bigger group of people than I ever thought would listen to my dumb voice. Um, and uh, and, and I, I, you know, there's a burden that comes with that and I hope I don't let you, any of you down. And I know Jason feels the same way. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any uh, specific expectations or dreams for TGN when we started. I, uh, to me, it was, a, it was like a side <laughs> gig. It was like a little side hustle that was there was no intent to make any money from it or do any, you know, grow it. It was, uh, it was something we were doing on the side purely for fun. And what has come out of it, um, and I still think that's our motivation, but what's come out of it, the, the incredibly, uh, and I don't want to sound more noble than I am or high-minded than I am, but just evidence is, is the people that come by our table um, the yep. past couple of days is just the the impact that we've had on people, um, and, and that they've and, had and on vice us. versa. Yeah, yeah. No, it's two. The way. community we've built, um, where you hear people saying, "You guys inspired me to, to take up diving," or "You inspired me yep. to you know lose weight," or or start hiking, or do whatever it is, or, yep. or doing what I love. I mean, it's like that. That's what it's all about. And we get that feedback through our emails and our direct messages and our Q and A episodes, and that to me has like it's taken. This little side hustle thing that I had no expectations about at the beginning and turned it into something that I'm just blown away by. I'm yep. just like, this is this is actually a big thing in my life. Yeah, it's made uh, a huge difference to you yeah, and I. It, yeah. I mean, it's entirely changed our last few yeah. years. Yeah. Definitely, I don't, like I said, I said this earlier, I don't know what the pandemic would have been if I didn't have this outlet to just be like creative and also complain about the construction at my home or whatever. <laughs> um, it is a little spooky when people start to, it's super you meet people and they say, you know, how was your how was your drive here? How was your you know because they they know you know everything you've talked yeah, about. Yeah, for it's sure. Like, it's super humbling. It's, it, um, it, it, it's always a very it one way honest. street, but it's nice to kind of now get it back when we're here. Yeah. And the other nice thing I know, and, and I'm speaking more personally because obviously I, I have a, a role with Hodinkee that that's kind of high pri high profile, and I take that super seriously. I don't want to speak out of turn. And when I get things wrong, the first people to call to like bring me back in line are the the TGN crew because uh, they feel like we're all on the same level, which we absolutely are. Um, I'm not above a comment section. I'm not above our email, certainly. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, that's been like, a, like as far as a, a metric for professional growth, like I can't, I can't speak to how important it's been. I'd be half the watch reviewer I was without uh, all of you listening and telling me when I got something wrong or missed something or whatever. That's why I take a, a kitchen scale to my watch reviews and, <laughs> and that kind of thing, so. 
think we have two. All right. Uh, well, that, we that's all the time we have uh, for questions. Uh, thank you uh, to everybody, and thank you all for being here. Old fashions at the bar. Old fashions Old at, fashions the, bar. at the, bar. the bar. Let's do it. Jason James. Thank you guys. Love you guys. Thanks, everyone.